I'm the co-chair of the third uh, international ESH multiple myeloma uh, conference and uh, during this conference I'll be lecturing about maintenance therapy in the young myeloma uh, patient treatment. I'll be also speaking about the treatment of uh, older but fit myeloma patient. During the maintenance uh, talk uh, in the young myeloma patients after autologous stem cell transplantation, the major goal is to, ad is to address the um, aims and current uh, and available research evidence in this field. Because uh, we all know that maintenance therapy uh, after autotransplant has been a matter of debate over the last few years. And actually, the maintenance story in myeloma is a relatively old one because historically, uh, chemotherapy, standard chemotherapy and interferon alpha were tried in the 80s and 90s and failed. Then came thalidomide, which proved to be quite effective, especially in terms of progression-free survival. However, we know that toxicity of thalidomide uh, may be a limitation to using it uh, for maintenance. Then obviously uh, came uh, lenalidomide, uh, and uh, the different randomized trials, phase three randomized trials against placebo uh, were uh, performed. All of these trials uh, could show a clear benefit in terms of progression-free survival in favor of uh, delivering lenalidomide maintenance after autotransplant. The problem is related to overall survival. Not all of these trials were conclusive. And we know that when it comes to maintenance therapy in multiple myeloma, obviously the idea is to deliver a gentle therapy over the long term. Of course, the therapy needs to be safe, but also I think the goal is not only to reduce relapse, the risk of relapse, but also to extend overall survival. And this is the reason why uh, there was this huge debate about the value of maintenance after autotransplant. And of course, when you have several phase three randomized trials, uh, which are not uh, conclusive or which do not agree with each other, uh, one way uh, to sort this matter is to do a patient, uh, you know, in the individual patient meta-analysis. And actually, this has been performed and presented. And interestingly, the meta-analysis is in favor of an overall survival advantage over the long term. So today, I think we have some good evidence in favor of delivering some form of continuous maintenance therapy after autotransplant. There is still, uh, there are many unknown questions. Of course, what is the right duration of therapy? Because we don't have yet the answer. Is it, should it be one year, two years until progression? We don't know this. Actually, the uh, case is not closed when it comes, what is the optimal agent? Because the focus has been uh, mainly on image, but now with the advent of uh, oral uh, proteasome inhibitors, the question may be asked again, because obviously these are also uh, effective drugs in myeloma that can be used uh, uh, safely. So I think it's a really uh, fascinating field. Uh, we will also need to define who are the patients who are likely to benefit most from maintenance therapy. So definitely uh, lots of questions and a lot to do for the uh, next few years. The future of myeloma is really brilliant. Actually, there are plenty of uh, good news for the patient and there will be more and more uh, treatment options available. Obviously, this will make the life of the physician more and more difficult. Because actually when you have several treatment options which are uh, ready to use, the greatest challenge will be to define the optimal sequence of therapy for a given patient 
with a given disease at a specific time point. And this is going to be crucial because this is uh, a very complex uh, multi-parameter uh, process and unfortunately we don't have uh, biological objective uh, biomarkers for example to guide us. Uh, also please don't forget that uh, minimal residual disease evaluation is coming strongly into the field and this is adding another I would say important parameter to consider. So I think uh, while drugs, novel drugs are there, actually the work has to start now on knowing how are we going to combine these drugs, how are we going to sequence them, uh, are we deliver all agents always until progression, do we need treatment-free intervals, how to handle all the side effects because also this is another important topic. These new drugs are coming very, very quickly into the field and I'm not complaining, this is really good news. But when you have a drug coming very quickly into the field, obviously you need, it takes time to get more knowledge about the safety profile and side effect. So it's a continuous learning curve. And finally, uh, I think we are more and more focusing on the biology of the disease. We know that myeloma is not a single entity and I think there is more and more data emerging, highlighting maybe we will be able in the next few years to dissect a few myeloma entities. For example, I'm thinking about the translocation 1114 uh, cases where some treatment approaches may be more appropriate than others and so on. This uh, third international multiple myeloma conference held in Milan uh, now in October 2016 is clearly proving uh, to be a very successful one. Uh, and I think the success owes a lot to the participant. And one uh, interesting and uh, fascinating aspect is the level of interactions. It clearly highlights that the whole myeloma community, not only the top experts or key opinion leaders, but everybody, every practicing myeloma uh, doctor is really more and more involved in trying to uh, optimize you know, the management of these patients. And there is a lot to do. And as a co-chair of uh, this uh, conference, I'm quite happy about uh, the result.